IIT Kharagpur, IFAC, and many centers right in, right in Bangalore. So, but here, uh, I wanted to understand the basic difference between the, how the academics uh, look at it, how the industry looks at it, and how the research institutions actually try to manage. See, academic institutions are very good in research, but they are poor in development and very poor in delivery. Actually, any of the projects we describe, with the subject they are really wonderful. Four competencies they need, enormously, you know, gold. We have to appreciate what the academics know. But when it comes to development and delivery, they are quite poor. Whereas the industry is extremely good in delivery, but poor in development and very poor in research. And of course there are some exceptions. In both cases, the development is a weak link. And in the developed countries, the R&D institutions, as well as the academics, as well as the industry, they join hand in hand. And this is a high time in India, we have to do it. And this is uh, the uh, this seminar is a small step in that direction. When you go deeper and deeper into analyzing various properties, the rapidly increasing use of high modulus, high strength, fiber reinforced composites in the aerospace industries and the structures, and the damage tolerance and the reliability of the composite materials and structures have become a significant concern. See, when you take the conventional material as well as the composite material, conventional material excuses you. Any defects, I think it is going to allow. But in the composite material, where you have put in the right type of filler in the right manner, no fault or no defect is excused. Small defect also is going to create damages. In the power sector, let me tell you, we have the porcelain insulators. In the place of porcelain insulators, now we are putting the composite insulators. Composite insulators, the silicones on the outside, they are supported by the fiber reinforced plastic inside. And these are light in weight, and compared to porcelain insulators, we get attended advantages. But the problem is, if this composite insulator is not manufactured properly, if there is some problem about the moisture ingress, then it's going to sort of lead to brittle fracture. You'll be totally surprised how polymers also break in a manner which is described as brittle. Not only the porcelain breaks, but also the polymers also break. So how it is processed, how it is assembled, that becomes important. Next comes the conductor. All of you have seen the aluminum conductor. I do not know how many of you all of your mechanical engineers would have seen, okay, there is a tower here, there is a tower there, aluminum conductor is good. Okay, we are evacuating the power. But the aluminum conductor, let me tell you, is going to get heated up when the power is uh, transferred. Supposing you have plenty of power in one place, you would like to evacuate the power and transmit that and supply it to some other place. If you try to push more power, the conductors heat up. The conductors won't stand more than 100 degrees centigrade, maximum 90. Beyond 100, it starts sagging. The moment it sags, that is going to create all the damages. All of you remember the various blackouts, including the one famous blackout in USA. I think it happened just because conductor sagged and it does a tree which was full of water, moisture leaves, and then all, I think, uh, almost uh, the whole of USA became blackout. And this ha keeps happening in our country too repeatedly. So in order to avoid this problem, we have to put a conductor which can stand higher temperature, more than 100 degrees. For that what we do is, in the core of the aluminum conductor is steel now. It is ACSR. Aluminum conductor steel reinforced. We are replacing the steel with a composite core. This composite core he is going to start up his standard temperature up to 200 degrees and we make sure that the power transmission is nearly two times compared to the ordinary aluminum conductor. I think if you look at the structure, you like look at the cross section and the properties we are 
we, 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 we try to assess and convince ourselves that it is a fail safe delay and a very good exercise. If time permits, possibly tomorrow I will organize a lecture on the composite conductors. Talk to the organizers. And we, in the CPRA, we are going through a quality program. If time permits and the everything is okay, I think I will make sure that this lecture is given. So this is uh, about the uh, composites and then the transmission towers. The transmission towers occupy a lot of right of way. Just imagine in the place of transmission towers you have composite towers. Composite towers I think are not going to occupy so much of place. Right of way also is saved and with the com composite con uh, towers, with the composite insulator as well as the composite conductor, your power evacuation is more, I think, assured and also is safe, but this requires a lot of technology. It is not simple. Very easy to visualize, but before we put into practice, the amount of preparation that is required is enormous. It is going to take one more decade before we get the compact transmission lines. So, the another important property in composite materials is the Fracture processes. The fracture mechanics. Possibly, it was a earlier, remembers the initial discussion I had in the 80s, possibly in the late 70s. When I was handling fracture mechanics, you were telling me that it's a very difficult subject. Uh, where you take care to control all the properties clearly, especially in ferrous materials. Yes, fracture mechanics are very important in composite materials too. There is no clear guideline for the students of fracture mechanics to understand everything about the fracture mechanics and composite material, both in theory as well as practice. So this becomes important. And presently, before I conclude, I'd like to tell you the research and innovation are the key factors that contribute to the success of any industry. Innovations in process will have greater impact in terms of wealth generation and the we can cite many examples of tremendous success achieved by Japanese companies. For the time being, we'll, we'll totally sympathize with what is happening in Japan, but the, but the progress what they have achieved is enormous, especially in the automotive sector, and this is because of the process innovations Japanese people have carried out. And also the process innovations carried out by the Indian pharmaceutical industries. They are really excellent. We strongly suggest that the combination of product design and the process innovation should have more much greater impact. This, those topics should be addressed greatly in this seminar. I think all of you should really appreciate and anticipate more and more, especially as a form of learning, product design and process innovation. India is capable of producing the world class products at half the cost of what the Europeans make. And more than 150 companies are in the Fortune 500 list, and the development of human resources for the composite industry and the achievement and upgradation of technology and facilitating the growth and development of Indian company industry and the Indian composites, especially the industry oriented composites, is a need of the year, need of the hour. And I wish the participants as well as I wish the whole seminar grand success. I am sure you will take part in the development of the composite industry much more actively because of, of this seminar. I think you would have learned a lot of basic aspects as well as the application. I wish this seminar all the success. Thank you. For a wonderful conclusion speech, which I hope has motivated and inspired all the participants in the field of composite material research work. Now I request Professor Shekhar and sir to give an introduction of Dr. T. Shankar Kumar, joint director. I would like to introduce Dr. T. Shankar Kumar from CPRI and give a small background from Biodata. Uh, Dr. T. Shankar Kumar is a PhD holder in the field of mechanical engineering and is presently working as Joint Director in Materials Technology Division, CPRI. 